Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. I know we have a lot of new subscribers recently, which is really exciting. So hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be really exciting, a little bit out of my norm, where I'm going to be discussing everything that happened at Puzzle Jam South. This was a puzzle event I went to in Decatur, Georgia. And honestly, when I went there, I really had no expectations of what it was, what was included. I know I signed up for a speed competition, but there was just a lot of unknowns for me. So I thought this would be helpful in case you are wanting to decide to go to it in the future. Not sure if each one will be similar or have all the same things, but kind of gives you an idea of what I experienced in the time that I was there. So I had arrived on a Thursday, I left on a Monday, but the event itself was from Friday through Sunday. So I do have some footage from when I was there. We will go back in time. I'll do some voiceovers for sections because I really didn't do a lot of talking to the camera just because I'm not super comfortable talking in public and plus all these people were brand new people to me so I just didn't feel super comfortable but I do have a lot of footage of when I was there for Friday and Saturday. I have nothing for Sunday so I'll come back here and tell you what happened for Sunday. Before we get into that little bit of the video I'll just give you a little bit of what the puzzle event was. So Puzzle Jam South is a American maker puzzle event so it's kind of in correlation to Puzzle Parlay but that is only wooden puzzles and that is up in the northeast. This one was down in the south and they opened it up to just American puzzle makers. So it could be either hand cut wooden or laser cut wooden or it could be some cardboard manufacturers. And so it was a three day event, it was super fun. I met so many other puzzlers and influencers. And we're just gonna go back to my first full day on Friday. I did arrive there on Thursday and at that time I had met a few people in the lobby. We had puzzled, we had gone to ice cream. We're, we're just going to go to Friday, which is the first day of the event, and we'll just go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you back here when we get to Sunday because again, I just, I just didn't film anything. I was exhausted at that point. So let's just get into this. Hello, good morning. So I am in my hotel room. And I feel like I haven't really been able to properly start this video yet. For one, I'm exhausted. So yesterday I had a very long traveling day. And then last night it was pretty cool because a bunch of us did go and have some ice cream and chat. And I didn't realize how many like puzzle cutters there were going to be at this thing, which is really cool. I've learned so much already about people doing hand cut puzzling and laser puzzling. And I think it's a really cool art form that I haven't really experienced too much about, so it's been fun to learn about. So I just came up from breakfast. The event doesn't start until 3 p.m., so I have a few hours, and one of them did lend me a puzzle to do, which is right there on the box. So I'll just show you that one. Um, it is hand cut, and he does a lot of really cool stuff, so I'm excited to try it. All right, so here it is. It's by Mark Capitella, and he does hand cut stuff. He said this is one of the last ones that he cut before coming here. There's all of his information. Um, but let's just see what this is. I have no idea what the image is. He just handed this to me down at breakfast. And so he just did this one. It's 237 pieces. And it does look like it's a level six in difficulty. So let's see what's inside. I don't know if there's even an image. I might have to do this blind. Ooh. Ooh, there's a lot of black and white. Oh, and there's words. Okay, let's dump these out. These are so thick and chunky. Like, look at that. Look how many layers. They were talking about like wood and such last night. So interesting to learn about. Here's another one. They're just super cool. So let's see how this one goes. I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to finish it before I have to leave. We'll see, just because there's no image, so I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't get too far into this puzzle, but I do go over all 10 puzzles that I do in this video, so plenty of wooden puzzles to go around, but I did get invited by Jessica and Diane. Jessica is from Peaceful Puzzling, and Diane has Bizzle Puzzles, and Mark, who is the creator of the puzzle that I was doing, to just walk around town. We went to some shops. We, of course, found some puzzles, but we didn't buy anything. We were just shopping and then we ended up going to the rec center before the event. Diane was part of the planning committee. So we were just checking out the walk to the event. All right, so I got back a little bit ago. I was supposed to be heading back out. I got roped into helping set up for the event. So I, of course, got distracted by the puzzle that was left unattended. 
We only had one hour to set up, so I did help with the table covers, and I also helped set up their puzzle library, which is a way for us to borrow puzzles that people had brought in and try them out, almost like a library system where you can rent them out for the time being to do. They also had cookies for all of us and goodie bags, which I did already discuss in my puzzle haul, but there was well over $100 worth of stuff in these bags. And then there was the first workshop of the event. So this is hand cut puzzling that people could sign up for. So sorry if it's noisy in here, but I'm about to do this one by Puzzle Buddy. It's super cute. Now, I already mentioned it a little bit before about the puzzle library, but that was by far my favorite part of this event because I don't have any experience with hand cut wooden puzzles. And this was a way for me to try tons of different brands to learn about and try without having to purchase any of them and just to experience them. And this one was absolutely stunning. It was line cut the whole way around the hummingbird. And then there was also a final piece that I put in that was actually shaped as a hummingbird. And overall, this was just a stunning puzzle to do. And I was so excited by the final result. Okay. Next, I have a hummingbird puzzle by 3 Cat Max. 3 Cat Max does laser cut puzzles. She does wooden puzzles, but then she also had a collection of these plastic pieces. And I feel like this isn't giving it justice of how beautiful these pieces were. But they're so crazy as far as piece cut goes. Jamel is the owner of 3 Cat Max and her whole goal was to create really difficult puzzles. And so this whole time I had no idea what was happening. I didn't have a picture to go by. But at the end it was so cool because there was just so much negative space. And it was just absolutely stunning to do and very surprising. Apparently the new strategy is I go up to the table and they just hand me one. So don't I know what this is, but let's try it out. This puzzle here is by Nani Made Me. She is a newer hand cut puzzler, so she was really just looking for feedback on this puzzle. So when I had brought up the hummingbird puzzle, they handed me this one to give her some feedback about it. And I will say I love this one. It was super bright, very colorful. It ended up being a picture of a fish, which had a little bit of a glue issue, but honestly, I loved it so much. And then we all started working on this one by Mark. He had this impossible puzzle that had never been completed before, so we all tried to partake. And by the end of the event, it was finished, but it did take a team of people to get through it. And then afterwards, I ended up sitting at this table with a few other puzzlers and me and Dan from Puzzle Files, we worked on this really cool one from Chestnut and Hemlock, which is a three-layered puzzle. So it ends up being a bouquet of flowers, and a couple of the pieces are glued together, so it's like extra high, but then there's like layers on top of layers. It was so fun to do, and the end result was absolutely stunning. So, hello. I am back in my room, finishing up this martini puzzle. I didn't get to film much of it because my camera was being really weird. Pretty much all the phones in this area have been really weird since you've all gotten here. And I just noticed that there was an update. So I updated my phone, my camera now works. But I'll show you where I'm at with this puzzle. So far today has been super fun, very educational about the wooden jigsaw world, which I feel like I'm such a noob at, but here is what this one looks like. So here it is, it's getting there. Um, what's cool, it has like a scalloped edge and it has had a few fun cut pieces. I guess, I, oh, someone told me what the name of that type of piece was. There's like a heart there. Um, it's been really cool. So the word I was looking for was figurine piece. And those are the ones that are like shaped as a specific item. And he had a few in this puzzle. Overall, I love this one. I will say it's been really fun to try doing puzzles without an image. That is a skill that I don't do often. And it was really fun to, to kind of branch out of my normal puzzling style. Here it is. This was so nice. I feel like I need better lighting in here, but this is super cool. Hello, good morning. I'm so tired. Um, again, having a hard time falling asleep just because of time differences. I usually stay up pretty late at home. And so here yeah, I'm struggling. I'm gonna go down to breakfast and then walk over. And today is exciting. Today is the 
store so you can shop puzzles. So we'll see if I end up getting anything. Um, I don't know, but I'll definitely be doing some today. Today is also the speed competition, which is a wooden puzzle, I think. So that should be fun. And then we are do I'm doing a wood cutting class or a puzzle cutting class. Also, there's just like a crazy amount of puzzling. Um, so it's going to be a good day. It's gonna be a long day and I'm tired. So I'm gonna go find coffee. So Saturday was a very full day, starting off with the puzzle shopping. So from nine to 12, we were able to walk around and shop from all the different vendors. Some were wooden puzzles, some were puzzlers just selling some they didn't need anymore. I met Meezy from Unified Pieces. I met so many fun puzzlers and brands and was able to really talk to them about their inspiration. Um, and it was just really fun to buy a ton of puzzles that I don't normally see. And I, as you can tell by the haul video I already posted, I did pretty well with my shopping. They also had some free cold brew coffee. They had the cookies, and I believe there was also another treat that was available to just have. Um, but we also had a couple hours between the shopping event and the speed competition, so it was just a lot of puzzling. I did this one from Turning Taxis, which I really love this image a lot. He is also newer to the hand cut puzzling world and I really enjoyed this image. It had really fun whimsy style pieces and I just liked the colors a lot. Afterwards I did this small little snack puzzle from Elms and this really fun Halloween puzzle from them as well. And then I did this one from Stumpcraft which I don't remember the name of but I loved it. Yeah. So at 2 o'clock is when we started the speed competition, which was for a wooden puzzle, and we were not given any type of image. My partner was Marilyn, we had just met, and I literally sat down and said, are you really wanting to win? And she said, nope, I'm just doing it for the fun of it. So we really tried, um, but we weren't doing like the best of the best. We did end up finishing during the two hour time frame but we were definitely not first. I think we ended up around the middle of the road, but in general, the puzzle was really cool and it ended up being a collaboration from two different brands. One was the creator of the artwork and the other one helped with the cutting and it ended up being two separate puzzles but combined into one. And it was just fun to partake in the speed competition even though we did not win. And then after that, I did my hand cut wooden puzzle class, which I will say I was not very good at. Um, I definitely did struggle with this, but it was still fun to learn about and try. I don't think this is a skill I'm going to be mastering anytime soon. It's definitely not as intuitive as you'd expect it to be, but it was still fun to learn about, and I can say that I hand cut a wooden puzzle in my life. After that, I did two more puzzles, this one from 3 Cat Max, and then I started this one from Waterford Puzzles, also known as Elms. They are going back to their original root, so it's called Elms now. And it was a really fun uh, water buffalo puzzle, which also was a one-man band. Like, the whole style of it, definitely my cup of tea. And that was pretty much the end of day two, and I was absolutely exhausted at this point because I was not sleeping well. But let's go on to Sunday. All right, we are back and I am just going to go over what was happening on Sunday. For me, Sunday, I was just pure exhaustion. I just never adjusted to the time zone. I'm having a really hard time going to bed, so I was only getting a couple hours of sleep each night. But let's just go over Sunday real quick, just so you can know what else happened. So Sunday morning, I feel like this is where I was really confused of what was gonna happen on Sunday, because we had a whole schedule of what was when, and I feel like it was mislabeled or just really, I really wasn't sure what it was going to be, but so it ended up being like an ask me anything type of event. And I do feel like there would have been more people if people knew what it was, um, but when I got there on Sunday, it was a much, much smaller group. There are some people who had already head home, but I also know there were several people who just didn't know what it was. So when we got to the rec center, I really had no idea what it was about, um, but they did have three sections of tables that you could sit at, so I just sat at one, and what it was was a round robin. Pretty much you're just in groups sitting down and listening to one of the puzzle creators and then we all moved and went to the next one and there was three in total so 
We got to listen for, I think it was 30 minutes for each one. So I will definitely go into a little bit more detail of what they spoke about in their own video when I'm like discussing the brands and like, I don't know when that will be, but it was really fun to almost have like a masterclass from the brand owners themselves, which was really cool. So the first one I was able to listen to, her name was Chris. She is the owner of Dope Colors. So, so for her, we learned a lot about her backstory, why she created the brand, um, the inspiration from a lot of the images that she has, future collaborations that she's hoping for. She was super fun and down to earth, super funny. And that was really cool to learn about. The second one that I got to see was Barbara, and I forgot her husband's name, but they own the Puzzled Co., which does PVC style puzzles, and they use water jets for their cutting. And I feel like they are so revolutionary and interesting based off like the, how they're creating their puzzles and their future projects and how inclusive they're trying to be and accessible that they're trying to be. So that was a really fun brand to learn about because I feel like they're very, very unique. And then the third one, which I thought was a really good twist on it, is that we had that we were able to listen to Holly and she is one who is an illustrator of her own puzzles. And so we got to learn about her whole style and how she comes up with the images. And I did already buy one from her, um, which was Brand Castle, which is like a Dracula style, very dark and Halloween style puzzle. And so it was really fun to learn about from all three of them. And it was very different takes on being puzzle creators. And I feel like for the whole event, I was able to experience a lot of just the behind the scenes and the thought processes that happened within the puzzle world on the brand side of things, which is really fun. Like I got to talk to some wooden puzzle makers. I got to talk to some more startup companies or ones that have been in the business for a really long time. So after that event, we did some door prizes. So each of us on our little lanyard, we all had a number associated with us. And so they ended up just pulling numbers out of a box and we were able to get some prizes. Unfortunately, there wasn't too many of us left, which I feel like is such a bummer because Sunday was such a fun, like intimate style of day. And you, and so you definitely know that there the amount of people that were missing when we were doing the door prizes because there was a lot of people that didn't show up for their prize. Who knows, maybe just people needed to head home early, but I do think that was such a bummer because there were some really good door prizes. I did win one. I won one from different puzzles, which I had already done in my 24-hour puzzle-thon. So that was really cool that I won one. I feel like a lot of people went away with something, which is really cool. And then after that, it kind of was just a lot more relaxed. They did bring out a kind of like a birthday party type thing since it was the first one of its kind. So they had a whole bunch of cupcakes for her delicious and some fruit if you want a healthier option. And then they did have a wooden hand cut wooden puzzle jar of a cupcake for every single person, which was really cool. So a lot of the puzzle makers, though, hand cut wooden puzzle makers they collaborated and they all made their own version of cupcakes and I do have mine I'll put it here on the screen mine was from M squared and I actually didn't really speak to him much when I was there but I really liked his puzzle and it was really fun to see the different versions that people got which was really cool and there was enough for everyone to have at least one some people brought a second home for maybe a friend or a sister or something like that but i just took the one and it was so cool that that was actually included in the ticket price which i think was def definitely like above and beyond and then after that it was kind of just like casual getting to know each other there was a lot of pictures being taken with each other and um a lot of just like conversation i just was bouncing around from each table and saying hello to everybody. Some people were like speed puzzling because they were getting ready for worlds. Um, some people were just puzzling on their own. So it's just like kind of casual wind down of the event. And then afterwards, I helped them clean up. Overall, I do think the Puzzle Jam South event was very organized. There was so much stuff included and little surprises like the biscuits and jam and the cupcakes and the little free wooden hand cut puzzle so I definitely think they took a lot into account and just made it a really special event so this event is every other year they are going on the opposite years of puzzle parlay which is a different event that's in the northeast and that one is solely wooden puzzles and I was told it's more like convention style where there's a lot of different speakers and there's like a historic aspect to it and it is just a different vibe but um, very similar as far as the wooden puzzle part goes so 
it's just a really cool experience to meet so many makers, meet so many brands, meet so many fellow puzzlers, just have a ton of puzzling for a few days and to be ex able to experience so many hand cut wooden puzzles, which I didn't honestly know existed. So it is something that I'm willing to explore here on my channel. I do have contacts for quite a few of them that I would love to feature here maybe once a month to get eat the a little bit more exposure to that side of the puzzling world because this definitely is an art form. I feel like even though they were smaller piece counts, some of them are really, really difficult. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about the event, please let me know down in the comments below, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.